Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to give you a sneak peek into products that I will be reviewing shortly. The stack of reviews were getting kind of tall and I was like, this is, I got to get through this. I've got to review these products, let people know what they're all about. And uh, some of these things are things that I purchased myself. Some were things that brands sent to me for review. And um, you guys can help me figure out what to review, what to review first. Just let me know in the comments down below what you're most excited about. And um, that will help me figure out what I should work on next. Um, and I really wanted to get started on a couple of these reviews today. So I figured, well, I'm just going to go through the stack because things get into the stack, friends, and then they get lost. So, um, so yeah, so first of all, this, this right here, this on top really necessarily isn't a review. They're great. I've used them before. They're just zipper and mesh pouches, but I found these from Jarlink and they were really inexpensive. I think they were like, um, I think I paid 18 of these bags and I think I paid um, about $15 for these 18 bags. Maybe not even that much. Maybe it was 13, but then I even saw these on prime day sale for less, but, um, these are nice quality. They are great. They're like these little mesh kind of waterproofy bags. Great for throwing your stuff in. If you want to go paint in your kayak, I put my stuff in these little bags. I have one. This one's not a Jarlink one, but it's like the same thing. It's just kind of like Derek when I keep my, my, um, water brushes, my watercolor travel kit that I use with water brushes. I use this little pal there with that um clips onto my tiny little sketchbook i have a little you know kool-aid uh or a juice you know like those crystal light things the juice flavor things in there to fill the water brushes i love it because it keeps everything dry and i can see exactly what's in the bag and then i've got this one for my book binding supplies because i've been making some handmade sketchbooks lately and you know they're just fantastic and they're really affordable and they're you know they're going to last a lot longer than like a ziploc bag and your your tools aren't going to poke through them like they will in a ziploc bag so um i really like these i guess this is my review on them because i really don't need to do a whole video on them but i will link that down below okay i know exactly where it is so i can find it in my amazon orders um yeah and then this is the this is the rest of it wow this is quite a box but um some of the stuff you've seen me share on sat chat because when it came in i'm like oh this is coming up but i really just need to I need to get on the stick and finish up some of these because sometimes I ordered a few things and I reviewed one of them and I kind of forgot about the others. So this right here I picked up and this actually might end up being, um, one of them is probably going to end up being a gift, but it's uh, this little palette. It's kind of like that small one I showed you in my, um, in my travel book there, but this is like 26 wells, I think. They have little quarter pans in there. They're glued in their plastic pans and then you can clip that onto your sketchbook. And this was, it was a pack of two for 20 bucks on Amazon. And it's still there. I'll link it up for you, but I thought it was a great deal. They're hinged rather than magnet. The other one that I had, and actually I paid 20 bucks for this thing. And I was very disappointed because the quality of it was not as good as this. This looks like a walnut. This was like a, I don't know. Um, I guess it's oak, but it's it was not finished, which is fine for the paint because the paint, I wanted to stick in there really well. This I had to resin over because it was just painted wood and it was very sloppily painted. Not that it matters that much once you actually put your paint in there, but this one thing was 20 bucks. It works great, um, but I think this is a much better solution. Plus you get two for $20 and it's bigger. You got more spaces for colors and about the same size walls, I would say. This does not have the inserts. This is just the raw wood. So I think this is a much better deal than this. And I thought that would be so cute to like do as a Christmas present to like do, make a handmade sketchbook. And then this is my, this is not my good one. This is my testing one after I had kind of ruined some paper doing something else. I decided just to see if I could make one. But I thought something like this, a little sketchbook. Um, I'll show you how they attach to just what you would do here. I'd probably do it on the side and just use the clip there. Won't be able to go through all to the back of the board because it's pretty thick, but you know, you just go like that and you'd be able to paint and have it on there. But anyway, I thought this would be really cute with a handmade sketchbook for a Christmas present. So, um, and that's just a basic Coptic um, binding type deal. If you're wanting to know how to make those sketchbooks, there's tons of tutorials online, but I thought that was such a deal. Um, and I think it'd be really cute to do like a little Christmas thing. I'll probably have that. That might be in my Christmas gift guide. I know that's quite a ways in the distance, but I just thought I couldn't believe the price of it and the quality was really nice. So um, I guess that's a review of that too. I, I recommend it. Well, you know what? Some of these are just such quick reviews that we can just get right through them. 
This here, um, I was at Rennie's in Ellsworth or Belfast. I can't remember. Ellsworth, or probably Belfast. And they had they were carrying some Arteza products. And I thought that was really weird. This set of 24 markers. I hadn't seen them online, and they were um, it was six dollars or six ninety nine. Is there a price tag on it? I think it was six ninety nine. And the 12 color set was the exact same price. So they're kind of like your Tombos, but um, yeah, they're just a water based water based marker. And I thought they looked they looked kind of worth a review. I picked them up to review, and uh, I'll do a review on them. This is not it, but they they you know they feel good, nice matte handle. So uh, you can let me know if this is something you're excited about. You can let me know in the comments below. Some of these things might not be interesting to you, so I just want to have that information so I know where to start, basically. Oh, speaking of markers, this I'm actually going to work on this today. Um, but this is the new 66 set of pastel markers from Artex. And the Artex pastels are very clean, which I like. Um, really great for blending out your other colors. And they've combined what used to be in the 40 and the 24 set into one 66 set of the pastels. Uh, so, and there's also a black in there for some reason. But I think uh, I think that'll be kind of nice. I like this type of packaging where you can like tip it up and have it. Um, well, we can open it actually. I like this kind of packaging because it will also be storage and it will set on your desk so you can access everything, which is really handy. Let's give this open. I know this is probably like, Lindsay, why are you so close to the camera? It's only going to be a problem right now because then as we dig into the box deeper, it won't be too bad. But you can see you've got all of your markers just like that, really easy to see. And this folds underneath so you can like set it down and then you can reach in and find your markers. And I like that. Um, and I like and I like their pastel range, so I'm looking forward to doing something, probably like some ice cream or something kind of creamy and dreamy with that. But uh, probably by the time, maybe I don't know when I'm going to post this. It might not be because oh, these things fell out. It comes with its own swatch card and stuff. Although I find with the Arctic swatch cards, a lot of times they look lighter on the swatch cards than they do on regular marker paper. So I like to swatch them on my regular paper too. All right, this is one I think I told you about during a sat chat. These are the uh, this is the Talons Art creation sketchbook. Now that is their, their, they have a couple different ranges of products. Royal Talons, they have like the Rembrandt watercolors. So I'm just talking about watercolors here. They have Rembrandt watercolors, which are great. Love the Rembrandt. Then they have the Van Gogh watercolors, which are also really good. They're kind of like, they're almost as good as artist grade. They're really good. And then they came out with an art creations line, which is like the line, it's kind of like their student grade line. So they have like a student grade, a mid grade, and a, um, oh, this is a sewn sketchbook and a professional grade. But I've heard some really good things about these sketchbooks. Now, I heard they can take some mixed media. The paper is pretty thin. It's an ivory color. They uh, seem to lay pretty flat. But um, I like that it's square because I like to post stuff on Instagram. So I think that'll be really handy. And I just couldn't resist this this uh, kind of coral color. I thought that was really cute. So um, uh, yeah, I'll have a review on this. Let me know. Just let me know. Let me know what your favorite the favorite things are. What, what you're most excited about. Oh, this right here. I saw these on Becca Hilburn's channel, Natto Soup, and I'm like, oh, I need to get some of these. They're these clips, but they're you clip them onto a sketchbook and it'll hold a pen or a pencil. And I actually uh, used one yesterday, and I put it on my big sketchbook I'm using for World Watercolor Month. And lo and behold, it was perfect for keeping my uh, my pen, my pencil, my mechanical pencil. So I'll show you what I did for yesterday for World Watercolor Month. I did uh, the sandwich. I went to the beach. I bought a sandwich and I sketched it. Actually, I had to take a picture of it real quick and then sketch it because it was a dog that was roaming around trying to mooch everyone's sandwiches. Uh, but yeah, this works great. And I think I think it was like about eight bucks for 12 of these little clips. And of course, you can slide them off and, and put them wherever you need them. So it's not like they, you know, you can keep reusing them. They seem to be pretty good quality and pretty heavy duty. So um, those are exciting. So I guess that's my review on these as well. These little, these little um, pen clips or pencil clips. And I never would have even known these existed if I hadn't seen Becca on her channel showing these off. I think she might have got hers on... Um, on AliExpress or Timu or something, but I haven't shopped those places, so I just I looked on Amazon and they had them. They had tons of them, different companies charging different amounts too, so you can always shop around a bit. This uh, paint was sent to me from my friend Ophelia. Oh, that's why I do that little spray bottle. This is like one of those free perfume samples from Lancome. Um, <laughs> uh, they are great. You can pull the top off and rinse it out and fill it with water and then, you know, put it in your travel stash. So there's no cap on it though. That's the only thing you might spray some water, some faintly scented water. But, uh, I thought that was just quite the, um, 
quite the neat thing. Anyway, these paints, these are the metallic watercolors from Stone Ground Paint Company. They are a Canadian company. And anyway, Ophelia, Ophelia had two sets, so she sent me one so that I could review one. Then these, um, these are the Niji Artist Crayons. I saw them, I ordered them from Blick, but I saw them, um, aver not advertised, well, I guess advertised. I saw them in like the background of a CHA video or a Creativation Namta video, and I thought those look so much like the Jane Davenport Power Pastels. And the Power Pastels have discontinued, and I never saw another product like them. I actually have them right here because I'm gonna do a comparison. But let's just do a real quick comparison right now. So these are, oh my gosh, these colors look pretty darn similar. Let's just, okay, that's the Niji. This is the Jane. Whoop. Oh my gosh. They feel pretty darn similar. Um, and all the colors all look really similar too. It looks like the exact same colorway and everything. I think it's the exact same colors. So this is a set of 18. This is a set of 18. I think they're the same thing. Um, these are great for resists. So I'll be comparing these to each other and it even comes with a blending stick. So like this was like 10 bucks, I think. And this I think was probably 30. So, you know, if you were, if you like these, it looks like these are going to be a really good dupe. I mean, they look just looking at them side by side, they look so similar. And the colors seem to be identical. So I think I found, I think I found, yeah, I think I found the dupe. I think I found, or not the dupe, but I think that probably they're both private labeled from the same company, whatever that might be. Let's see, where are these made? Does it say? I don't see where those are made. Where are these made? I hate it when they don't say where stuff is made. Uh, made in China. So anyway, um, I'm doing going to do a comparison on these. And speaking of, I also picked up the Karen Dosh 15 Swiss Colors of the Neo, like the Neo Color One kind of student grade. So I did a, com a comparison of the Swiss Color water soluble crayons and the Neo Color Twos. I'll be doing a comparison of these and the Neo Color ones. Do I have my Neo? Oh, I do have my Neo Color ones right here. So I think I'm, I'm thinking they might be a really good alternative if you want to try like the Neo Color ones and maybe maybe try a small set and see how. Oh, you know what I can do? I can swatch it right on this. The, so these are the Neo Color ones. I could try it right here on this swatch. Let's see. Let's get some similar colors here. Let's try the ochre. That looks good. This brown. Try that green. Oh, they feel nice. I think that this is going to be a nice, um, I think these are going to be a nice alternative, but of course I'll need to do them, um, Oops, that's more like that. I'll need to, you know, use them side by side and see, but they're very pigmented, not very waxy, but they are the non-water soluble ones. So I did get those as well. And I'll compare them to my Neo Color ones, just like I did with the Neo Color twos and the other versions. So I love crayons. I know it's kind of silly, but um, but I picked those up. Those are both from Blick, and uh, they the, I think the the crayons were also about ten, eight or ten bucks. They weren't a lot. Um, then I've got the Rosa Dot card, which I did ask you guys about, should I swatch these and do a video on it? And you said yes, so that's coming up. I have the 10 new colors as well as the classic colors, so that's coming up very soon. Um, this here, I'd honestly completely forgotten about this one. This was sent to me from the, um, uh, Grisai Art. And this is a, it's a burnisher blender set. And they have this system of, um, they have a system of coloring, like a paint by number type coloring thing. But let me see, what do we have in here? We've got the burnisher and blender, which looks like the Prismacolor blender. We've got a pencil sharpener and we've got three colored pencils uh, under the Grisai brand name. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't really know what I'm going to do with this yet, but 
that did come to be uh, to be reviewed, so I will do that. I probably should do that sooner rather than later because I've had these for a couple weeks. Oh, there's also a little pad of also a little pad of Stonehenge in here. So I'm gonna uh, so I'll just stick to those three colored pencils and those blenders, and we'll see what we can do with that. So again, if that's something that you find really exciting and that's your favorite thing so far, then let me know. Um, these here, I have been using these papers a bit. Uh, these are from Akuma Crafts. They asked me if I would consider reviewing their watercolor paper in their mixed media paper. Um, I, I haven't tried the mixed media paper, but the watercolor paper is very much like uh, the Fabriano Studio or um, uh, the Royal Linicle student grade paper. It's kind of like a, it's a kind of good middle of the road type of, you know, practice type of paper made in the UK. These two, both of these um, papers are made in the UK, which is kind of interesting because you don't see too much these days made in the UK, especially that's not like on the higher end. So uh, we'll take a look at those at some point um, if you guys are interested and otherwise I'll just use them in, you know, in videos as we go. Uh, this here, these are really cute. They're sketching pencils from Art X. The simple, they have those Oros markers, but look at the gorgeous colors. I mean, they're just, they're just graphite. They're just graphite pencils, but I think it's really charming, the different colors that they chose here. And you can purchase open stock or you, I don't know if you can purchase one single pencil or you can purchase like 12 of one, one, uh, one flavor, one, you know, hardness. But I thought those were really cute looking and um, so fun. And can you imagine if you were an art teacher and you had um, like cups of these pencils around for your students, I think that would be so cute. And I love the box that it comes in. It's very, it's very youthful and fun. And um, yeah, they're, they're beautiful pencils. They got a matte finish. Uh, they come unsharpened and in this gorgeous packaging. It's just fun. Their, their stuff in the Artix line I find to be very, youthful and fun and carefree and just, uh, you know, it makes you kind of excited to use them, which uh, apparently I haven't been that excited because I've had these for a few weeks and I have not um, opened them up yet. But these were, these are the markers were sent to me from Artix for review. This here is a fun one. This was sent to me from a viewer and she has, uh, she sent me um, paints in the past review and these are the Mission Gold or Mission, do they call it titanium? It's a Magello Mission Titanium Gouache. So it's like the, um, you know, Mission Gold watercolors. They have a gouache and this is their gouache and they've got, they're, they're not as trans, they're not as opaque as other gouaches, but you can mix them with, you know, your white to make them more opaque. Um, and the palette that she sent them in is from, um, let's see, Artist to Embers, I think is the name. Arts to Embers, and it is the cutest palette. Let me see, how do I open this? It's cute if I can get it open. If I can't get it open, then I don't know what to call it. But the thing that's neat about this, and she sent me the dried samples, is that this is not cracking and falling out, which is really nice because a lot of times with gouache, you're kind of stuck because you're, um, you're you kind of got to use it fresh from the tube, or you got to keep it in a wet palette, or you got to seal it up because the they can crack apart and fall out. And it doesn't seem like that's gonna be the case here. They feel a little sticky even. And I think that must be, there must be honey in the paint. So um, this is one I'm really excited to use. In fact, I'll probably use it for one of my World Watercolor Month sketches, um, but I'm not, no, oh, no odor to it. Uh, but the palette comes with a little swatch card, which is really handy. And I'll just tell you the uh, Perfect Pencil Case Watercolor Palette, 36 Paint Wells from Arts to Embers. And I believe they're on Etsy. But I'm excited to try this out. She did um, beautiful swatches here and put down the um, the pigment information, which is so handy and so helpful. Uh, she swatched it like I swatch them, so that's going to really save me some time. But I'm really excited. I might actually just take these with me right like today and do today's um, today or tomorrow's World Watercolor Month with that because that's so it's ready to go and I just love that. So anyway, that is that is the Mission Titanium. Mission Titanium or Mission White. I think it's Mission Mission Titanium Gouache, Magello Titanium. So that's the one I'm really excited for. I've heard mixed reviews on the, because they also had Mission White class a few years ago. So I don't know how different this is. I never had the Mission White class, but it was when you had to mix kind of like the Shinhan pa Shin Pass and the Paul Rubens um, opaque watercolors. It was kind of like a, a hybrid. So I'm really curious about that. And, um, yeah, let me know if that's the one you want to see, you want to see next. 
Now this, I told you guys I got this in a sat chat. These are some of the Daniel Smith Extra Fine Gouache, and I have not used them yet, um, but they are on the stack to, to review and use. I am so set in my ways. I love my jelly gouache. I just pull the lid off and I scoop up my paint and I go. For whatever reason, unscrewing a cap it just is just too much. That's why I always work from like watercolor pans. I put my paint in a palette and I let it dry. It's just more convenient. So I find that I kind of in the same way a little bit with gouache, but with the jelly gouache, you just take the lid off and you got all your wet paint there ready to go. So um, I just need to get, I just need to put some mud on a stay wet palette and use it and see. But this is the Daniel Smith extra fine gouache. Let me know if this is what you're excited about me using. Um, Oh, I also bought a single tube of the, I already reviewed this paint, but um, I got a single tube of the Cobalt Black, because when you guys uh, gave me the tip that you actually could get a single tube of the Cobalt Black on Amazon, and so I'm like, what? No, I swear I looked for it and I couldn't find it. So I looked again and they had a tube, it was 10 bucks, and there was like one or two left, and I snagged one. Um, so I love this paint, I'm using it up rapidly in my uh, triple pan palette from Mission Gold that's up on my fun art desk right now, and uh, I'm really enjoying that, that paint set. I have a review on that on my YouTube channel from March, but I just bought a tube to replenish, so I'm not going to do a special review on that one tube, but I do have a review on that paint. Um, these I'll be working on pretty soon here. These are the um, Paul Rubens acrylic markers, and there's two different there's two different sets here. The thing that's really neat with these is that they have different. Each marker has two colors, so um, they most of them would be like a lighter and a darker version. So we've got this like lavender color on one side, and then we've got the um, the darker purple on the other side. The thing that I really like about these types of acrylic markers is that they're brush tip and you don't have to prime them, so you just, you're ready to go. I'm not sure if these are gonna be more like gouache, like the Ardex ones, or if they're gonna be more like a, an acrylic, like a Posca, but um, but I also like this case where I can open it up and see everything and everything's got a, got a place. So this might be a really good travel option for acrylic markers, because I generally never bring my acrylic markers with me. So I think that would be a really good option. And then they've got this one here, which the branding that, like the way that acrylic is written looks very much like Posca. Um, these seem to be about the same, seem to be like the same thing, just a different body type. Yeah, just slightly different, slightly different colors. Maybe these are more for blending because the colors are a little bit closer together. But again, you don't have to prime them. I dislike prim priming markers. So these are, might be a little more gouache since you don't have to prime them, but these seem to be a little bit closer in value, so maybe a little bit more for natural sketching, but the Paul Rubens have just come out with both of these, and um, and yeah, we'll take a look at them and we'll see we'll see what we think. I'll probably, these will probably be fairly soon. If I, if I don't, I might just do like a demo with them, like I'll do a painting with them and kind of talk about them as I do it. I'm not sure. Now, uh, this here was a major dud. I'm so disappointed with this purchase that I'm already giving it the thumbs down, but these were, it was a stack of 100 watercolor postcards, and I'm so disappointed because it said 100% polypropylene in the, uh, in the ad, and these are absolutely not polypropylene. These are just cellulose watercolor paper. I was so disgusted with these, and um, I'll probably end up collaging or gel printing on them or something, because I already opened them and used a couple to see how they were, so I don't think I can return them. Maybe I could, but um, they would just throw them away anyway, so I was, this is 20 bucks too, so I was pretty bummed out, uh, but I think I'll just gel print on them and, and use them as postcards, I guess. I don't know, maybe collage or a sticker. I don't know. Maybe I'll find a great use for them and then I'll be all happy about it, but right now these are dud and I uh, don't recommend them. Um, I ordered a couple brush sets on Prime Day. This is the only set that's come so far, uh, but I am going to read those are going to be some of the first things I use because I know because I did recommend these. Oh, I said I was ordering them, but I wanted to review them early just in case there's something wrong with them. People can return them before they open them up. They can you know, send them back, but I think these look great. These are quill brushes from the Art de Gria, which is a Spanish company. They're designed in Spain, made in China. Anyway, they're, um, these are two good size quill brushes. They're synthetic squirrel. I also ordered their set of, I think it's 12 synthetic squirrel brushes. And then I ordered Gray Bee's set of nine quill brushes. So um, these are the only ones I have in my hands, but I will be reviewing all of them or using them in a demo and kind of doing a demo review because I want to make sure you guys have that information. This here is uh, it's a set of 36 La Petite Aquarelle. 
I bought and reviewed the set of 24 when they first came out a few years ago and I love them and, um, and I've recommended them and then I've heard some people say they're not as good anymore so I thought well I knew the 36 set I'd seen it every once in a while I saw it the other day and I snagged it up because I'd seen it before and then it sold out immediately so I bought this on Amazon for $38 and uh, like I paid 27 for my set of 24 many many years ago and the packaging looks a little weird but I think it's legit um, but I want to see, I mean, I'm sure it's still an LEA. I think it just has a sleeve on it, but it looks like it's been taped up. I don't know, but let's take a look real quick. Oh, the sounds. Oh boy. Everything is taking a little journey, but we'll put it all together and we'll test it out and see what we think. I hope it's as good as the first set that I had, but I wanted to compare it and update the review if it's no longer as good. I just want to be able to tell you whether it's good or not. And, you know, put a disclaimer on my old review if, if it's not as good. That's also why I bought this set of Pretty Excellent watercolors, because I love this set of Pretty Excellent. And I noticed they've repackaged and changed the format. And now things are in individual half pans, which is great, which I love that as far as like packaging wise. But I'm wondering if the quality is still as good because the price really hasn't gone up. Like I bought this set in 2017. It was 20 bucks and it was awesome. And I recommended it. It was definitely one of my top um, Amazon affiliate sell selling things. And uh, they were in like a little kind of ice cube tray. Well, kind of like what's underneath there and not in half pans. Now they're in half pans and uh, still the same colors. And I got this on Prime Day for like $17. So I just want to make sure that the quality is still good because if it isn't, then I want to make a notation on my old review so that it is accurate. Um, because it's like, how can they keep making this and with every price on everything going up, how come the price on that is not going up? I also bought a replacement gouache for, because I'm running out of my Anagani white gouache. So I got this pouch where you can refill it. It's got like three, cups worth in this pouch and um, I want to make sure the quality of this is as good as the quality that comes in the jelly cups because I got a Hemi one and I haven't used it yet but I heard the Hemi ones refills weren't as good but I haven't had a I haven't used up a Hemi one yet and then I also bought some printable vinyl sticker paper that's waterproof or water resistant durable sticky quick dry and compatible with most printers and I want to make some some stickers of my popsicle and cupcake and cocktail artwork I think that would be kind of cute I don't know what I'm gonna do with them but I want to make some and there you have it. Those are the things that are coming up to be reviewed on the Frugal uh, Crafters YouTube channel. You're probably thinking, how frugal is that, Lindsay? Look at all those things. But most of these things are actually pretty affordable or affordable alternatives to other products. So let me know what you want to see first, and I will get cracking on that. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye.